y'all. Welcome to Naked Talk with Jess podcast. I am so excited about today's episode. I have Claudia Chan Wagner with us today, and she's going to be talking about whole life leadership. I met Claudia last year, and actually when I was looking in my notes on the, her book, the best-selling book, This Is How We Rise, that I read, I was noticing that it was exactly one year ago this month that I read her book. So that's pretty cool and interesting that we're going to be talking today. So Claudia is an author of the best-selling book, How We Rise, and the How We Rise Whole Life Leadership Course. And we originally met through the Faster Way to Fat Loss. I'm a certified coach in that program. And I also heard her speak at the conference there. She's done keynote speaking, and I'll let her share some of the companies that she's worked with, but she's just an all-around amazing woman. So very excited to bring this um, interview to you today. And I want to share a little bit about her course. I took the course last year, like I said, almost a year today, and I really have grown so much from it. So I'll have Claudia share about that, and then we'll be sharing a link to that course. I think it's really valuable, especially given what we're going through right now with COVID-19 and just a lot of challenges that we're facing. So be sure to listen for that code and link, and I'll also have that in the show notes. So welcome, Claudia, to Naked Talk with Jess. How are you doing today? Good. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks for being here. So I shared a little bit about your book and your leadership course, but I want you to share with the listeners just what, um, what made you do the course or what were some of the things that you were passionate about that you weren't seeing out there um, that you want to share with everyone listening? So, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur who uh, has been in the leadership and social impact space for over a decade. All of this started with my conference, my award-winning conference called She Summit, which started in New York in 2012. And um, over the last eight years, we've been convening leaders and, uh, and just thought leaders and experts around inspiring people to Uh, be the leaders and change agents that uh, they're really, that we need in our workplaces, in our communities. And we've had over 600 speakers over the years. And and for years I was doing the leadership conference and then I wrote the book. It inspired me to create my own methodology and paradigm of leadership, which is what I call whole life leadership. And to help people realize their highest potential, personal potential, but also that we're all here to lead change for something and that we all have a movement inside of us and that you can lead change from where you are, that leadership is, it's accessible, um, making leadership purpose-driven. Leadership also means leading change for what you care about. And also leadership is, needs to be whole life integrated. It needs to mean treating your whole life as the organization that you're leading and to really assess and looking at all your life departments. So after years of just doing the conference, the book really helped me sort of sit down and, and really put on paper biology of what I had already been teaching for so many years. And then from the book, uh, of course, you know, do, did a lot of, do a lot of workshops and trainings at companies like Google to PepsiCo and ESPN and, and various brands, because over 100 companies send their um, employees and their people to the conference. And so focusing on people in the workplace and, and really creating this new definition has been a big focus. And from there was born the course and uh, to really then take people through, okay, now you've read the book and now it's do the actual leadership course. And when you look at leadership trainings out there. There's, you know, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. There's John Maxwell. And and I just feel like the whole leadership education space really needs disrupting because a lot of it is old school. It's like old school, like, you know, manage productivity. And this is leadership is managing teams and managing efficiencies. And, you know, it's just, it's very, when you think leader, you think middle-aged white man, you know, running a company or a, an expert, right? You don't think in, in our, if we ever want to get to gender equality, we need a more gender traits balanced definition of leadership and actually one that's going to help families and communities thrive in, in addition to careers. So yeah, so the whole curriculum 
was born. And then, and then the How We Rise course today is an eight module journey online um, of, of sessions and worksheets and to really just do that deep, deep personal growth leadership work so that your whole life can thrive. Yes. And so when I, when I first met you and then I heard, when I heard, met you online through, um, through the faster way creator, um, Amanda Tress, who was one of your clients. And yeah. if you have, if you're not familiar with the faster way to fat loss, you need to be, I'm a certified coach with that program. It's a premier virtual intermittent fasting and nutrition program. And it's amazing. So that just shows you a little bit of what Claudia does and how she helps her clients and how they're making impacts in this world. I heard about your program and it spoke to me immediately. So I share as a holistic health coach, how all areas of our life are interconnected and they affect the other, especially our business. But for me, this spoke to me, especially when you said just what a little bit of what you talked about right now is we have this vision of a leader in our mind and we may not be able to equate that to where we are in life right now. So I started as a blogger years ago. I was a stay at home homeschooling mom. And it's so interesting you say that because in my mind, I would think that leaders are just what you said, middle or upper management, CEOs of big corporations. I never thought, wait a minute, I'm a leader and how can I impact my family? I'm leading them every day. And I'm That's leading right. other people that are watching me or, or I'm influencing and I may not even be aware of that. So that's what, that's and one the of the shift. things that I love. And the shift, right? When you have that, when you don't, when people don't associate themselves with being a leader, they literally give up, they leave their potential and power and impact on the table. And you are really giving other people the power decisions for you. And it, it's like every human being has influence. Every human being can make a difference. Being can lead. And when we don't, when we don't think of our associate ourselves with that word, then, then we're really just not, we're not almost giving ourselves our worthiness, you know, that that's due, that's due to ourselves. So that shift that happened for you, you know, there's an empowerment and a confidence that comes with that. And also just a new responsibility, right? So that energetic shift to me is so critical. Oh my goodness. Yes, Claudia. And I noticed from, like I shared, this was a year ago, this, this month that I read your book and did the course and even just taking that on, I felt responsible, you know, whereas if I would have said, oh, well, I really don't work. You know, I stay at home. I, I have a podcast. I'm a coach. I felt a more sense of responsibility to say, hold on now, you know, I'm going to step up and lead during this time, even though it's a difficult time with the stay at home orders and all of that, we're not taken away from that. And I'm not going to say that I didn't feel some fear or anxiety and stress at the beginning because it's changed, right? It's something like that, but it's just amazing how I felt now a responsibility, like you said, to stand up and lead my family, my home, my community, the people who watch me or listen to me or I've impacted. So I love that you say that because also going from being in college and having, a, you know, starting on a career path and then staying home with my children, looking back now, when I, I share a lot of that I lost myself in motherhood and then chose to find myself again and take back my life and um, share those things with others, that just really changed my mind shift to just like you said, oh, well, I'm just at home now you know, I'm a stay at home mom. Oh, I'm just a stay at home mom. I got, yeah, I do this thing on the side. You know, we just, we are so devaluing ourselves. And yeah, yeah I think that there is an entire, and that's why I'm so excited, you know, about you. There's so many different personas of people that have, that have done the program. And yes, there's like the corporate professional, but I love this whole, the army and the masses of stay at home, stay at home parents or um, those that, that dropped out of the workplace or their traditional career. And maybe they are, maybe they do a little like freelancing or maybe they volunteer at their local school or maybe they, you know, and to actually, as opposed to just, oh, I'm just a stay at home parent, that they're actually reframing around that. And they can actually see themselves as, wait, like these are the things that I'm currently managing and leading. <laughs> and, and so I, I really, I think that you, Jessica, represent this entire, you know, just, just population of, 
of, of those people, of those women and, and increasingly men yeah. um, to actually reframe around their potential and their leadership. So yeah, I'm super excited that you, you experience that impact. Thank you so much. And then one of the things you talk about is personal leadership. So investing internally so you can overcome those external things. And that once again can go with, just like we shared a lot with my growth journey, um, in, investing um, internally in myself so I can kind of weather the storm. And you talk about that a little bit when things come our way. But also, if you want to refer back to the corporate world and those companies and in businesses, investing helping their employees invest internally because now more than ever we're seeing people are having to work from home. They're having to juggle a personal life and pets and kids and spouses. And um, we're recording as I've shared uh, on my Instagram and Facebook back in my closet where it all started. And those leaders are going to be the ones who take that situation and what they're going through and we rise above it hence your book, this is how we rise. And that's how we rise as leaders, regardless of where we're at. And if we're in a company, if we're an entrepreneur, if we're a parent or a community leader. So um, investing internally is so important. And I love that you talk about that. That's what all this work is. It's, it's, really, it's really more internal leadership and, and really getting your, I call them the foundational pillars of personal leadership. And that the analogy of a, of a tree. And if you are a tree, you want to be the tree with really, really deep roots in the earth because when the hurricane hits and the tornado comes, you, you don't, you're rooted and you don't fall over in like two seconds. And so those, those who really have done the work on the personal growth, on the, on the personal growth front and really contemplated a lot of these areas, um, the eight modules, it's, it starts with, you know, redefining what leadership means to you, but then it, it starts with whole life purpose, visioning, uh, you know, your vessel, your career, you know, your vocation um, as your greatest vehicle of impact. It uh, goes into your, your it builds resilience, cultivates courage, community, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, there's a methodology to the madness of building yeah. that internal whole life personal growth leadership. And you talk about in your book, this is how we rise. One of my favorite parts in that is where you talk about when you're taking on big visions, you need to be prepared for big obstacles, rejections, adversaries, and naysayers. And this time last year, and you and I talked about this a little bit before the podcast, I was really, I had this vision. I had this message in my heart. I knew it was planted there for a reason but I had things that were holding me back. And one of those things before I did some of this growth work was, oh my gosh, I know if I put these big visions out there, there might be people who don't agree with me. There might be people who, uh, what, do I, what happens if someone doesn't like what I'm saying? You know, all these things were filling up my mind and it was stopping me from that. But now I know to be bold in your visions, you're going to have to face those challenges. It doesn't mean it won't hurt or I won't it won't sting a little bit, but now I, I'm prepared to handle those and keep going forward. And um, I, I think it was in module four, correct me if I'm wrong, Claudia, but the, where we do the hard stuff, right? The deep stuff that we don't always want to do. So share a little bit about that because that really gave me clarity as to what some of those limiting beliefs were for me and my vision. I also just make this analogy of, of, of a life mountain where if you just vision step back and vision looking at your life, looking, there's a mountain and birth is the beginning, you know, on the ground and, and your, your whole life purpose, like your destination is at the top. And that if you think about just like, as we climb and as we rise in our life, that, that if you choose a path of courage and you choose to do something big, which is actually even just having the courage to like believe in something like you had this, you wanted to help women shed shame around their bodies. Cause you, and I also teach that pain is your positive impact. So what have you gone through and learned and that you can teach other people? And, and this is your movement, Jessica, right? The, in this like women in sexuality space and just the overall like feminist and gender equality movement and unleashing women through that piece. And so that if you choose and you say, yes, I want to, I want to commit to this big vision that the higher you climb on a mountain, 
and the, and the higher up you go, there's going to be more friction. There's going to be more challenges. There's going to be more obstacles. The, the folks that choose the easy way, the ordinary over the extraordinary, that, that, they want to keep things simple and follow sort of the herd versus like stand out and be the person that is doing something different. You are going to reach more resistance and there's going to be more, you know, no's to yeses. There's going to be those days where you're like, oh, you know, this is so hard. And, or, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's really just reframing around those obstacles. So that's just sort of the first thing is that we need to, all human beings have, have challenges with, with with adversity right and and to but know that obstacles create opportunities and obstacles can you know the the, the more courageous we want to lead the more obstacles there are just going to be and so we like I'm, I'm expecting the obstacles to come i'm expecting the challenges like okay that means that's that means i'm actually growing that means i'm actually doing something courageous and bold fear means go and so you know, to actually a reframe around when obstacles or those that that resistance happens, that that's actually a good thing. And then the second piece is the internal work of we all have a lot of those external challenges will trigger what I call core limiting thoughts. And our core limiting thoughts, we all have them, and they are just negative patterns and and beliefs that we some that somehow were imprinted on us when we were young or like an event happened to us it was a way that we grew up it was what our parents might have subconsciously like taught us and so that it all everybody has them it's being human and so identifying in this module we identify what are those thoughts and how to when they show up how to have the mindfulness to actually again shift to more positive thoughts and that in our leadership and our, on our path and our rise, our climb to our highest potential, which is your destined, everything's happened for you to make an impact, to do something big. And so um, that all that stuff is going to show up. And so you got to just catch it when it happens and reframe around it through these tools. And that's the personal growth work of the program that every human being has to do to unlock their potential. Yes, and like you were saying, with in that module, where, when we talked about the limiting beliefs, um, and I love that you say life is happening for you, because when we experience things that are traumatic or working to get our pain through our purpose um, and our impact, it can be very easy to say, this stuff happened to me, you know, therefore, I can't do this, or I, I'm not doing that. And one thing that really helped me in my rock bottom moment and if you haven't heard episode episode one of, of the podcast, go back and start there and hear some of my story, but was really that mind shift, that mindset shift of saying, I'm going to show gratitude. And at that moment in my life, Claudia, all I could honestly say that I was grateful for was that I had a, I was, I had a dry roof over my head. Um, and my baby who was then 10 months old, um, when I had left this toxic relationship, became homeless moved in with um, a mom who at the time was, we had a very strained relationship that she was healthy. So I said, okay, I have a dry roof over my head and my 10 month old is healthy. I didn't know at the time I was pregnant with my other daughter um, and that would come later, but just starting with that gratitude and then looking back saying, you know, life was happening for me and it just, that started to making those small steps and now my oldest daughter is 16 and it's a journey. It's that mountain. And, and so I love how you paint this vision and looking back, I can see that where my life has been this mountain. And now I'm at this part, the obstacles are maybe more challenging as I get bigger in my vision, but that's okay because I'm doing the growth work and I'm equipped to do that. And so that has been so important for me. And in our, in our training that we did together, when I did your module, I finally got clarity on what was holding me back for this vision of helping women shed their shame around their bodies and sexuality. And that was, I'm a Christian. And I had all these limiting beliefs that because I'm a Christian, because of things that I'd heard and shame and, and different things, I couldn't talk about sex in a healthy way. But that's the very reason I need to talk about it. <laughs> Well, and then, and then, and when you add all that up, I mean, it's, it's, that's your story. And it's, it's all, now that you look at it, and I, was, I say from the outside in perspective, it, it all just was for you. Right. And that there's so much, 
there's so much that's suppressed in this world. <laughs> there's so many, you know, the, the world is so broken and there's so many problems to solve for. And I just truly believe 7.8 billion people on the planet that everybody has a, has a bigger, yes, we have our personal purpose, our family, our, you know, all that, all that stuff, but we all have a purpose in our communities. And so, yeah, I'm just, uh, this is your movement. And I'm so happy that, that, that you're on this path. Thank you, Claudia. And can you speak um, real quickly to the listeners about when you say the we versus me, because that helped me as well, even just sharing a little bit of my story where I started at my rock bottom moment. Now I've got the wonderful husband, the kids, the rescue dog, the, you know, the lake, you know, living on the lake. It's very easy to say, Hey, I've, I've done well. I've taken care of myself. My, my kids are healthy. I'm healthy. I'm doing what I love. I mean, there's a lot of eyes in there. And so that's something that really helped me with the book, but then also going into more detail in your course. So do you want to just share a little bit about what, what is this whole we versus me you're talking about? Yeah, it's, it's basically, you know, we're born with really a me over we mindset. It's very subconscious, but I mean, it's, it's human nature that, you know, we, we, you know, we go, we, we, our parents birth us and it's about feeding ourselves and providing and eventually you become a grown up and, but it, it's really all about me, myself and I, if you, if you think about it and babies come out screaming, me, ah! you know, like it's literally just in, in our natural nature. And so that's what I say, the me over we, where we prioritize ourselves. And it's really the path to our highest potential is shifting to what I say, a me for we mindset. And that, and it's, it's one of those fine lines because of course I'm going to take care of myself. Of course I'm going to provide for my family. Of course I'm going to prioritize me, myself and my immediate unit. And that's, and that makes total sense. But the whole purpose of that is to actually, as we, as we grow and get older and shape who we're becoming, it's, it's really, yes, I, I am receiving. I want to have a, a great quality of life and I want to provide for my family and of course thrive and have all those rich experiences. But all that is ultimately so that I can actually contribute and to serve. And it's when, you know, if, if we get to live on this planet for 80 years, our, the, the path, the time here is not to just take, 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 receive, receive, receive and not give. And so we just forget that. We forget that all the privileges that we get to enjoy, the community you get to live in, the benefits of you know, the town you're in to uh, clean drinking water, to the right to vote and to all these things. It's, it's individuals with me for we mindsets. It's purpose-driven individuals in our history. Um, our ancestors sacrificed, you know, so much, right? So it's, it's really all the privileges we have that we take for granted are because of people that did that for us. And so we're here, our time here, life is about what we contribute. And I always kick off my course by saying, that you know, your schedule is less about what you get done and more about who you become. Yeah. And life is a journey of who you're becoming. And you know, you want to be, you know, when we when we when we at the end of our lives, when we do leave this earth, it's like what was the impact? What did you leave behind? And other than yes, if you are a parent and you have a family or mentees or whatever, but it's it's really getting you to rethink and reframe around the purpose of your life and that it's the me for we mindset and journey that really unlocks our highest potential. And, and that's, I truly believe our destiny is we're here to yes, live and receive a full life, but to give it's through the giving and the serving and the impact where you get the fuller life. If that makes sense. Yes. 100%. And, and going back to just what we're all facing, not even just a nation, but the whole world, which has made what we're going through right now. So eye opening that this isn't just one, one thing affecting one person is the whole world going through it is that just what you were talking about. Okay. My family's safe. We have everything we need. Um, and just going through this growth process and going back to feeling, being empowered as a leader, right where I'm at in life and having that responsibility now that allows me to say, okay, now how can I give back? We're fine. We're doing okay. And it, I it was able to turn in my, even just my neighbors and then my community and even something that doesn't seem that might sound simple, but it was a big thing. One of our neighbors, perfect example, she was making um, masks for our local healthcare workers. 
Well, I didn't have a sewing machine, but I said, my girls and I can cut the, cut the fabric for you. So going and getting the fabric, making that, helping her in that process. But it really is that reframing of it's now we're doing the, we, how can we help wherever we are? And so if you're listening, one of the things that messages I love that Claudia and she's passionate about sharing is help where you're at and who are you leading and what impact can you make? So that is all so good. And that was really helpful to me as well when we started working together to just change my mind, my mindset. And I'm very passionate about what you're doing. It's really helped me and my message. And I, as I continue to grow, I refer back to that time and time again. And this is just a, you know, just to wrap up too, uh, is that I know that this is the time when everybody's working from home and, and it's very easy to be in reactionary mode, but to really carve out that time to invest in your growth and your internal leadership and your internal self, that self-development work. And that this is not a time to binge on Netflix. Don't binge on Netflix, binge on learning, binge on personal development. Because if anything, what's happening in the world right now really, you know, it's important that we step back and really think about what matters. I think that's what coronavirus is doing for our, our society right now. It's getting everybody to think about the basics, like back to the basics of what matters, family, safety. It's not about how do I consume and get more and more and more. It's just the basics of this is what matters the most. And so this is just a great time to learn. Yeah, to work. I agree 100%. And Go ahead, um, Claudia, and let, let our listeners know, and I'll have these show notes in, in the episode as well, but how we can reach you and where we can access your course. Um, and I know, like I said, I took the course, and I know you've done some, um, added even more to it. And so share a little bit about that and where they can reach out to you. Sure. So you can learn more about the course at shesummit.com slash rise. So shesummit.com slash rise. She summit is, is my company. And um, there is, it'll tell you all about um, the program and the share the modules with you. We are offering a $500 uh, promo code right now off the course. That code is lead from home. So it's on the page. So it's, it's right there for COVID-19. And also the book is available on Amazon or where books are sold. And I also have a How We Rise Leadership podcast if you want to get a more of a taste message yeah. from me. And I know, I think, I think you're thinking about a book, right? <laughs> yes. So um, we're going to do a book club. I thought this would be a great time. Um, while a lot of us are at home, we're saving that commute time and, and finding that those pockets of time to do a book club. And so you can message me there on Facebook or Instagram, they could talk with Jess and be looking out for more of that. And you can also message me if you want a link to that. If you're listening to this after the book club has started, I think it'll be a great resource. And, and it's, this is, this is how we rise. You can also go to my Instagram um, profile and you can find Claudia's book in there as well. So yes, I'm looking forward to that Claudia and you can, I'd love to have you come in and share some takeaways and maybe do some lives in there as well. So be looking out for that. Let us know if you have any questions. You can definitely connect with Claudia on Instagram. She's at Claudia Chan Wagner. And if you have not subscribed to the podcast, subscribe because we don't want you to miss out on any episode. You'll be notified when a new episode is released and we will talk to you soon. I wish everyone happiness and safety right now, and we'll talk to you next time on Naked Talk with Jess. Bye. Thank you.